What you mean we're raised? I just told you it's raised. It was the son of God. Because when you when you look at when you look at heritage and you look at race, it's a different thing. They not the same. When you look at this book right there, it's all about a heritage. This book was given into go to on Psalms 105 too. Verse, I think it's verse 5. Finish that for me real quick. And ye, Joel chapter 2 and verse 27. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know it, that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God. You see that possessive word? Your God. He ain't say nobody else. Go ahead. And none else. And who? And none else. Nah, the whole world. And none else. Why he say he in the midst of Israel and he's the Lord your God and none else? Why is that? Now go to Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Oh, verse 9. You can start at verse 6, though. Now go to read that real quick. All right. Because when we, just like I was just um, uh, telling the brother here, this man right here, they taught us this. When we got off those slave ships, this is who they taught us. They taught us him and his doctrine. But when you're reading this Bible right here, that's that's not in there. What it's I mean by the them? What is his doctrine? It's, it's not in the Bible. Christianity. Christianity. Oh, all you got to do is say, I love the Lord, get dipped in some water, and, and believe in your heart. All you got to do is believe. But when you read James 2, it says works without, uh, faith without works is what? It's dead. So they they not teaching our people what Christ really looked like, that Christ only came for the Israelites, and Christ only coming for his people and to keep his commandments and, the faith, and, and keep the most high commandments in the faith of Christ. All we Everybody is part of God's family. God created all men, right? He did. He did. Read, read what you got. Don't have time. Don't have time. The book of Psalms, chapter 105 and verse 6. O ye seed of Abraham, remember, O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. Mm -hmm. The children of Jacob, his yeah. chosen, right? Yeah, so if true. God created all men, why is it saying his children of Jacob, ye chosen? Everybody don't come from Jacob. Go ahead. He is the Lord our God. He is the Lord our God. The children of Jake, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the twelve children of Israel. Those tribes. Go ahead. That's His right. judgments are in all the earth. His judgments are on all the earth. When you read Deuteronomy 28, 15 on down, ain't nobody go through them curses but our people. Go ahead. He have remembered his covenant forever. He remembered his covenant forever because the Lord is not a man that he should lie. That's in there. Go ahead. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, mm -hmm. which covenant he made with Abraham. He made that mm -hmm. covenant with Abraham, go ahead. And his oath with Isaac, uh, to Isaac. With Isaac, go ahead. And confirmed the same unto Jacob. Now what Esau had in there? Because Jacob had two sons. I mean, Isaac had two sons, right? He had Esau and he had Jacob. What, uh, what, what Esau had in there? Abraham had Isaac. Right. Isaac had Esau and Jacob. Two sons. Now, where's Jacob? Where's, where's, because the scripture just said he made a covenant with Abraham, his oath into Isaac, and his promises into Jacob. Where's Esau in that if he came for everybody? In the Old Testament, he dealt with the That was his chosen. Hold that. Go to Romans 9. <laughs> Keep finishing. All right, all right. And, and confirm, and confirm the same unto Jacob for a law, uh -huh. and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. That covenant still everlasting to this day. Read Romans nine. Start at verse. Uh, start at verse one. Romans chapter nine and verse one. This is the new covenant after after the death of Christ. Give me Acts 5 and uh, 29. Romans chapter 9 and verse 1. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. So he not lying. Because you got to tell the truth when you're talking about Christ. Because if you if you lie on Christ, man, you blaspheme. Man. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Uh -huh. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren. Remember, Paul talking about his brother. For my brethren, my kinsmen, his kids, his kinfolk, his lineage, his bloodline. According to the flesh. According to what? According to the flesh. Nah, the spirit. According to the flesh. Oh, you mean to tell me you got to be an Israelite? You got to be born an Israelite. According to the flesh. Keep going. Who are Israelites? 
Israelites. Who are what? Who are Israelites? Keep going. To whom pertaineth the adoption? The adoption. Go ahead. And the glory. And the glory. And the covenant. And the covenant. The and, old and the new one. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And the giving of the law. And the giving of the law. Now show me Esau. Anybody else? Hit, hit my body. Show. Me. Because God only came for us, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. See what, what you can you cannot prove now because in genealogy. Everybody is mixed. Numbers you one eighteen. You can't prove that you are hundred percent. Numbers one eighteen. You believe in the, you? That's because of your skin color. You cannot. Prove no, it's, no, sir, sir, sir. Real ball. Hold on, Jake. We don't go off skin color, sir. We we don't. We don't okay, go off so skin color. So anybody can be. Uh, no. Well, again, no, 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 no. We are Israelite spiritual. No. Go to Numbers one eighteen. That's not true. The book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 18. Now, this is the reason we don't go off skin color. Okay? And they assembled all the congregation together uh -huh. in the first day of the second month. Uh -huh. And they declared their pedigrees after their family. So they just, so during this time, they gather all the children of Israel. Okay. They trying to fit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to let you ask when I'm finished. So they gather the children of Israel, right? So now they got to figure out what tribe goes to who. Let's see how they figure that out, man. By the house of their fathers. By the house of their fathers. Now, let me ask you a question. When you have a man and a woman, they have they, they consummate with each other. I, I don't oh, hold on, hold on. They consummate with each other, right? Because talk, we're talking about genealogy. They consummate with each other, right? Who plants that seed? The father or the mother? The father. Meaning what? You are who your father is. Yeah. So if you have a white man who's your father, uh, uh, who's your father, and your mother's black, well, you're considered I, as a white. How, how, how you get to how you get to a white? Man? No, it, that was just an example. Yeah. yeah. All right, you can ask your question. Okay. Uh, there's no way that you can prove who you are because or anybody out here, we're all mixed today. You cannot say that you are Israelite born Israelite. How can you say you are Israelite? This book. Yeah, go ahead. He pulled the perfect precept too, Nate. Yeah, Get him to read it. To the right. In Galatians, uh, we are all Jewish spirit. That's how we are. So, so that's how God included everybody. <laughs> So we all do a search. All right, go back. You can be, not everybody. Let me show you how that's wrong. Because that's, yeah. and I want you to hear me click. First, before we go to that, you give me um, James chapter 1. Go to James chapter 1. I want you to go back to Romans chapter 9. Mm -hmm. Because that's, once again, when somebody say we are a Jew spiritually, they don't understand what Paul was saying. They don't understand. No, I want you to hear me clear and close. They don't understand the letters of Paul. They don't understand the book of Galatians. They don't understand the book of Romans. They don't understand the book of Christ. They don't understand that in the church of Galatians, in the church of the Rent, or in the church of Ephesus, that those were Israelites who was doing the things of those nations that he was teaching. I'm going to prove that to you. James chapter 1, and read verse... Um, who also the Gentiles and Romans tell us that all I have sinned. Well, go to um, Daniel 9 11. For right, Daniel. right. <laughs> no, no. He's not talking about no, uh -uh. no, he's not. No, we're going to explain it to you. So, what's the first thing in Daniel chapter 9 and verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Yea, all Israel. Have transgressed that law. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, 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 sir. But first of all, what, what does what does transgression mean? Who was who was given the laws? Israel. Okay, then. So now, stop. If the laws was given to Israel, was it given to anybody else? No, Ten Commandments. No, no, the whole thing. Yes. Was, was it who was it given to besides Israel? Adam had a uh, covenant, right? I mean, uh, giving some laws. Noah had some. You're talking to Israel. Those people uh, uh, before Adam, uh, Abraham. Okay. What law were they on? Yeah. All right, so you said before Abraham? 
Yeah, well, nothing, because the most high wasn't dealing with certain so, so who, who, who those people belong to? So it was it not, like, not God people? It was called the sons of God, like the brother said. Give me that in Luke chapter 3. Okay. See, what you, no, see, first of all, like the scripture, I was going to bring it out, but I'm, I'm going to say I'm not disagreeing with okay. God. Yeah. Right. He wanted them to be a special people. Exactly. Now, I'm not disagreeing with you. All right. The Old Testament was written to them. Okay. But it did have some people who were a proselyte. And it was not Israel. Yeah. The, pros but, the, the proselyte that you're speaking of when you read in like Acts chapter 2 is yeah. not yeah. talking yeah. about other nations. Yeah. Yeah. It's still talking okay. about the children of Israel right. that were scattered abroad. So that's what you have to understand. You haven't been taught properly. That's why you're saying this right here, this right here is is what, what you have been taught. And that's why you understand that's why you're thinking that as far as Christ <laughs> So you gotta humble yourself down. Be swift to hear. Slow to speak. So that you can understand what we're saying. So now what you have? Four uh, through three, you give me Nehemiah nine and verse thirteen. Nehemiah chapter nine and verse thirteen. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai, and spakest with them from heaven, and gavest them right judgments and true laws. Good statutes right. and commandments. Right. So now, came down on Mount Sinai, gave him true laws, good statutes, and good commandments. Why are you right there? Go to Psalms 50 uh, and verse 8. For me. Psalms 50 and verse 8. Because when our people, when they think about Old Testament and New Testament, they don't understand that that just simply means Old Covenant and New Covenant. Yeah. Old Covenant was established by what? Animal sacrifice. Yeah. New Covenant is being established by what? The sacrifice of Christ. His blood, so what? The remission of the sins for the children of Israel. Yeah. All right? So now, go ahead. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 8. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices. I mean, sorry. Read verse um, uh, 7. Actually, uh, let's see. So I'm at verse 8. Okay, verse 5, I'm sorry. Psalms 50 and verse 5. <laughs> Psalms chapter 50 and verse saints. 5. Gather my saints, saints together unto me. Gather my saints together unto me. Who is the Lord's saints? The Lord's saints is the children of Israel. All right, like you read in what? Psalms 148. Come on. Those that have made a covenant with me by my sacrifice. Those that made a covenant with me by my sacrifice. So the Old Testament, the Old Covenant was made by what? Animal sacrifice. Give me now Hebrews chapter uh, 10 and verse 8. I believe it is. Right? Or 8 verse 10. Which... Um, About the new covenant? Yeah, new covenant. Yeah, 10 and verse 8. 8, 8, 8, 8 and 10. Yeah, 8 and 8 to 10. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. Eight. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. All right, but this is the covenant that I'm going to make with the house of Israel. Come on. After those days, uh -huh. saith the Lord, uh -huh. I will put my laws into their mind. I will put my laws into their mind. So this is the book of Hebrews. This is talking about once. It's, it's, it's going into a future prophecy. We're not going to touch it right now, but Lord's will be can I'm going because it's, it's, a, it's a long time. Come on. And write them in their hearts. Right. And write them in our heart. Meaning what? It's supposed to instill our mind. We're now supposed to be meditating on this. All right? So read it one more, one more time from the top. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. <clears throat> For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Start at verse 8. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So when you're looking at it, Most High, he had, he had told, said the house of Israel was going to be separated, was going to be removed off and outcast. Give me that in Hosea chapter 1 for me, all right? So the house of Israel was considered no longer a people. Eight. All right. And then he says the house of Judah. Read that one time again. Behold. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Make a new covenant and a new bond with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Come on. Verse 9. According to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand, to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant. Mm -hmm. 
and regarded them not, saith the Lord. Right. Then take heed to the covenant. That's what we read in Nehemiah chapter uh, 9 and verse 13. When he gave us this stuff by the hands of Moses, our forefathers, they didn't have the understanding. They can't see Christ in them. So yet it's still what they would do. They would still make their excuses by what? Constantly doing animal sacrifice. So the most high God, he says, look, I'm, I'm, I'm done away with that. All right? So now, read Hosea chapter 1 and verse 6. Start there. The book of Hosea chapter 1 and verse 6. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And, and God said unto him, call her name Lo, Lo Rama. Lo Rama. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. Right. So this is Hosea the prophet. God is telling Hosea, look, deal with this woman and you're going to get a seed. Now get a seed by it. Once you get a seed, I want you to call him out to this name because this child is to prophesy of the house of Israel and the house of Judah. They were split. They were considered two kings. So he says, look, with this child here, I'm no longer going to have mercy upon the house of Israel. Come on. I will uh, I will utterly take them away. Uh -huh. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm going to have mercy upon the house of Judah. Why? Because of the covenant they established with David. Come on. And will save them by the Lord their God. Right. Come on. And will not save them by bow nor by sword. He says, I'm not going to save them by bow nor sword. Meaning what? When that destruction, as you read in time past, they got carried away into Babylon. They got carried away into captivity. It was killed off. Come on. Nor by nor by battle, mm -hmm. by horses, nor by horsemen. Uh -huh. Now when she had weaned, weaned. when she had weaned Lahore, Laroma. Laroma, she conceived and bared a son. Uh -huh. And said, God, call his name Love Loami. Lo what? Loami. Loami. Yeah, Loami. Loami, for ye are not my people. So now, for you, that is the representation. For you are not my people. All right? So the children of Israel, all right, the northern kingdom part of it, they was considered no longer God's people. Come on. And I will not be your God. He said, I will not be your God. Come on. Yet the number of uh, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sands of the sea. But the number he said, but still, because of the covenant, it's still going to be as the sand of the sea. Come on, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. So in the place of saying that you are not my people. Where is it being said right now? Right here in America. When we bring this stuff out, people, they quickly want to say, no, we're not the children of Israel. Let me ask you, can, um, anyone who follow their body, can they be a child of God? No. no. Romans chapter 9. This is where I wanted to get it to. You. Right. So now, verse let's go eight. back to Romans chapter 9, and let's read 7 verse, and 8. Um, so, 6. Right. So what law are, are other people they want? They can do with whatever they want? Pretty much. Because well, the law was only be punished by God. They how, yeah, how does one be punished by God if we the ones that get punished? So, real quick, what is it? Go to so Revelation 18. What was the purpose of God making those people? What was the purpose of making those people? Those purpose to serve us, the children of Israel. Israel was supposed to be on top. Go, yeah, exactly. Go back to Deuteronomy 28 and read verse 1. Okay, all right. It's just, it's started, it started at the very beginning of when God made all people. All right. Yeah, but God okay. all people. What before Adam, Abraham? What yeah. law were they following? The other nations they weren't following the law. That's why God said to Abraham, "Leave your country of the Chaldees." Now what? listen, you all ask right. the, brother. You got to listen if you're going to ask a question. You have to right. listen. Okay. All right. So He says, "Look, leave the, your, your nativity of the Chaldees and go to a place where I go." And then that's when He established that covenant with Abraham. That then went from Abraham, Isaac to Jacob. God says, look, I'm the children, I'm, I'm the God of the children of Israel and none else. None else. Meaning he hasn't dealt with anybody else. He hasn't worked with anybody else. So as a result, when you ask him as far as for the other nations, what happened to them? Nothing happened to them. Because guess what? Here's the reason why when I'm saying that. Did they come over here on cargo slave ships, the other nations? Was they put in slavery? Are they getting shot down the streets here today? 
But who was getting shot down? Who was being mistreated? The so-called blacks and Hispanics. So, so as a result of this, saying you can't say who's black and Hispanic. Okay, so you don't have any proof of right. saying that. So let me ask you this question: Is Bob Marley black, white, Chinese, or what? What is Bob Marley? I don't know. See, okay, so now see, listen. Now okay, see, listen. You say you have to. You're not yeah. going by skin color. Yeah, you're going by seeing your father. You perceive that. Okay. No, 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 listen. All right, all right, listen. All right, one second. One second. Okay, you say ahead. you're going by the seed of your father. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, how do you know who who was your father in the back this time? I know who my father is at this time. I no, know who my grandfather is. If you're going to so, trade, if you're going to trade from okay. Ab Abraham, uh -huh. how do you know who was your father there? Go down to because Deuteronomy. Not everybody. If you're looking at skin color. Not everybody has the same color. All right. So now, listen. With that same carnal question. The same kind of question when I ask you, what is Bob Marley? So you, you, you can see that I don't know what you're about. Bob Marley, father was a white man. Do you know the actress Mar Maureen London? You think that she's a she's a that her father was a white man. Uh, Diana Ross going to Tracy Ellis Ross. Her father was a white man. So guess what? By that of receipt of her father, she's not of the children of Israel. She would be of that man's seed. So that man's seed is what? An Edomite. So now, before you, you write that Romans, go read that first. I want you to read that first and then we come to that. Romans chapter 9 and start at verse 6. Romans chapter 9 and verse 6. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. So though not the word of God didn't take no effect, for they are not all Israel, that say of all Israel. Meaning what? Those say that they are the Israelites, you had the Pharisees, you had the Sadducees, you had people that were still scattered abroad through these regions of Rome and Galatia, Cappadocia, that was of the flesh of Israel, but he's saying they're not all Israel. Come on. Verse 7, neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Not just because they are the seed of Abraham, they dare to consider the children of Israel. Come on. Are they all children? Uh -huh. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Mm -hmm. You know what? Abraham, he had another son, Ishmael. But he says, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Come on. Verse, verse and then 8. And he also had other children by Ketor. Mm -hmm. All right, come on. Verse 8, that is, they which are of the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God. Mm. So they are the children of flesh of those of, of Abraham, but they didn't come out of the lineage of um, Isaac. But even of those who came out of the lineage of Isaac, those of the children of flesh are not considered the children of Israel. Come on. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. But the children of the promise are counted seed. And that's what you was talking about in Galatians chapter 3, when it says, And Abraham shall I see be called, meaning what? In Christ. Because guess what? Yeah, you could be, you could proclaim to say that you're an Israelite, you can put, and you are in the flesh. But if you ain't got the spirit of Christ, go to uh, Matthew chapter three and verse five. Please. But if you ain't got that spirit of Christ, on so it, now we have the spirit of Christ. Are we, are, are we, are we a child of God? Not everybody. Not, not all that. nations. Oh no, no, no. Any, you, I'm, no, I'm any. talking about this. It's not because you think you believe and you have another nation. And you say you believe on Christ. Are you a child of God? No. Real quick, go to Matthew 15 and verse 20. Um, 15 and verse 20. At me as being an individual, say if I was white. If it was white. And I, that's what I'm going okay. to ask you. Gotcha, gotcha. Right. 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 Pick up that Bible and follow the Bible. Can I be a child of God? Oh, no. Do I have the spirit of Christ in me? No. No. You have the spirit of Christ in me. The spirit of Christ will not be on you because yeah. guess what? You're not going to, you, you want, you're going to follow the contrary to what Christ has said. How, how is our people, even right now, you are, you, not going to deal. hold on, hold on, brother. Even right here, you you would be considered a, um, an Israelite. We haven't even established that as yet. So let's let's go ahead and say, that for the sake of it, that you are of the, of the descendants of Israel. But even yourself right now, how you acting, but you gotta, you gotta learn this stuff so it's, no, it's not to condemn you or anything. It's not to show any fault for you. It's just that you have to learn it. Right now, even right now, you're walking contrary to, to, to the most high of God Christ. So therefore, as a result, you're not working in the right spirit. So those who are of the other nations, they're not going to understand this. They're not going to understand that we are the children of Israel. Even if they read it, they're not going to understand that God only loved us. Hold on, Matthew 15 and verse 20. Let's say, like I said, I'm a black man. I Matthew chapter 15 and verse 20. These are the things which defile the man. 
Start at, um, I'm sorry. Start at verse 22. St. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Zidon. Come on. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying. Right, so this is a woman of another nation, all right? She come out of the coast and cried unto him, come on. Have mercy on me, O Lord, uh -huh. thou son of David. Right, so then she knew that Christ was the son of David. She believed, but this is a woman of another nation. All right, come on. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Right. But he answered her not a word. So see, so now when you read Ty Pass, when, when, when anybody of, of, of Israel, they had said that they was vexed with the devil, they was sick, they was lame, they couldn't walk, Christ instantly healed them. But this woman of another nation, she said, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. He spoke her not a word, they didn't even entertain her at the time. Come on. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she crieth after us. And the disciples, these are people that stood from the with Christ. Send her away for the, for the crying for us. Only thing they didn't understand is that we did we didn't have a law of the land when it says if you're if a stranger is on the land and they vex, go in here and give them something. Go in here and help them out. Alright? You still had that law. So Christ had to perfect it because Christ if Christ never did that, then you say Christ was people being a sin. But we know that Christ never did no sin. Come on. Verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said, I'm not sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Hold that, Matthew 7 and verse 6. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 7 and verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Give not which is holy unto the dogs. You know what? Unto the other nations. Come on. Neither cast your pearls before a swine. Now the cast of pearls are goodly things, are goodly treasure before the swine. So don't give which is holy unto the dogs, but that's meant for the children of Israel. Back to Matthew 15, verse 24. Read it one more time. St. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he made that step in clear. Christ was above that of mind and it's like, oh, I, I, I didn't mean that. No, he, he knew what he was sent for. He knew what his duty was. Come on. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. He said it's not meat to take the children's bread to cast it to the dogs, to the other nations. This right here, the bread, this is the bread of life. Christ is our bread of life. It wasn't meant for the other nations. It was only meant for the children of Israel that was lost. Come on. And she said, true, Lord. And she humbled herself. She said, yeah, you speak the truth, Lord. I agree with that. Come on. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's she table. She acknowledged her role. But even the dogs, they eat from the crumbs. When you have something fall off, even the dogs come up and lick it up. So she understood her role. She knows that she wanted Israel. But she said, but you know what? My daughter's best. Can you go in here? Come on. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And, and her daughter was made whole from that very hour. So he says, great is your faith. Now he says, you know what, I'm going to go and hit you. I'm heal your daughter. Heal your daughter. I'm going to heal her. And I'm going to show you this why. She had faith in She had faith in Christ, and I'm going to show you why. Now, I'm going to show you why he did it. Go to Leviticus 19 and 33. 33. That's it. Hold on. I'm going to show you this. So that's, 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 I, no. Anybody that don't have faith is not considered the child of God. The child of God is only pertaining to those of the promises. Those who was pertaining to the promises was the children of Israel. So now, this is what Christ did. Christ did no sin, right? No sin. Leviticus 19 and 33. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 33. And if a stranger should sojourn with thee in your land, if he a stranger should... shall sojourn with thee in your land. This is not our land. That was our land. Come on. Ye shall not vex him. You should not vex him. So what did she say was a key word? My daughter is vexed with the devil. So we have righteousness and holiness within our laws. All right, but yet it's still, this right here is pertaining to us. This right here, we have to get ourselves together. The Lord, go, um, go to, um, what is it? What is it? Yeah. Can you go to Leviticus 22, 25? Yeah, go, 
thank you. I was going to that. Go to those people who was traveling with the Israelites. They were following God's law, right? Those people that was traveling with the Israelites were Israelites. They weren't no other nations. They were Israelites. You mentioned about the stranger. The stranger was not traveling. She was just there within the land. She lived on the land. What you don't know is in time past, when we was kicked out of our land, the kings put other people into our land. You read that in our first kings. They put us into, uh, they put um, our other people into our land. This is the, this is the history stuff in the Bible that our people was never taught. So then when it comes to, when you go into the New Testament and try to read, you're confused because mm -hmm. you never was taught properly of the Old Testament to understand the history. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 22 and verse 25. Uh -huh. Neither from a stranger's hand shall ye offer the bread of your God. Neither from a stranger's hand shall ye offer the bread of your God. Neither what? The laws, those sacrifices and things. Even Christ. To, which is Christ now. That was supposed yeah. to be offered unto the bread of your God. Come on. Is that it on that? No. Uh, of any of these, because their corruption is in them. Mm. Because their corruption is in them. You know what? The other nations, when you go, go into uh, Leviticus 25. Let me finish that out. Oh, and blemishes and blemishes be in them. They shall not be, be accepted, accepted for you. And they shall not be accepted for you. So what the other nations, they didn't have no inheritance within us. This is our inheritance of the law. Right. And I'm going to show you something. Go to Leviticus chapter uh, 20. 25 uh, and read verse 46, I want to say. I was mm, 42, something like that, yeah. read down. Read verse 40, 42. Yeah, that's it. Start yeah. that first. The book of Leviticus, chapter 25 and verse 42. Mm -hmm. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. Talk about the children of Israel. We are his servants that brought forth out of the land of Egypt. This right here is going into the law of Jubilees. The law of the servants, all right? When you had handmaids and whatnot. Come on. They shall not be sold as bondmen. So you can't sell your 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 own people as uh, slave men and slave women. You couldn't do that. Come on. Thou shall not rule over him uh -huh. with rigor. You ain't supposed to rule over him with hard bodies because why? That's of our brother, our kindred. Come on. But shall fear thy God. Uh huh. Both thy bond servant and thy bonds made, uh -huh. which thou shalt have. Right. So we may have had of our people that was working for us as servants, but you didn't treat them unjustly. You didn't sell them. You didn't put that rigor on them. Right. Because why they of our kindred. So for example, let's say you fell off a hard times you had your own land and you lost it. And you had to go to one of your brother's land and you worked for them for seven years. You you that brother's not supposed to deal with you unjustly. All right, come on. Shall be of the heathen that are round about you. You ain't supposed to deal with them like the heathen that is round about you, of the other nations that's round. You're not supposed to deal with your brother like you would deal with them. Come on. Of them ye buy, of them shall ye buy bondsmen and bondsmaid. Come on. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you. Now it mm -hmm. says, of the children of the strangers that sojourn among you. Come on. Of them shall ye buy. Of them shall ye buy as what? As your slaves, your servants, your handmaids, your bondmaids. Come on. And of their families that are with you, which they beget in your land. Come on. And they shall be your possession. And they shall be your possession. So as they are our possession, they have to follow our laws then. Can we go out there and possess the other nation when we the ones that's possessed? Can we take captives and live right now when we the ones are captive? No. Go to Isaiah 14 real quick. Verse 1. Go ahead. Verse 46. And you shall take them as an inheritance for your children and you, after you. And you shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you. So when you die, your children didn't inherit it. Because why? They of your family servants. Isaiah 14, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. 
Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Come on. And set them in their own land. And we're going to be put back in our own land. We're going to give back what is rightfully ours. But in order for us to do that, we first have to repent and come back to who we are and start following the words of Christ. Come on. As it is written. Come on. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And the strangers shall be joined with them. How? Come on. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Come on. And the people shall take them. And the people, meaning what? The children of Israel shall take them. And bring them to their place. Uh -huh. And the house of Israel shall possess them. And the house of Israel shall possess them. They ain't saying, hey, I want you to come along with me. No, we're going to take them. And we're going to possess them. That happened. That was the law back then. And that happened. And it's going to happen again when Christ ruled. Come on. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. For servants and handmaids. Is that finished on that, brother? No, sorry. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall take them captives, mm -hmm. whose captives they were. We was the other. Every nation had us in captivity at mm -hmm. one point in time. Come on. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And they shall rule over their oppressors. All right? Go to Revelation 2, verse 21. Yeah. You stay right there. You go to Isaiah 60, verse 10. Who is the Egyptians? Who is the Egyptians? Oh, the dark people. Like Egyptians. Oh, other dark people. Egyptians is who had uh, Israelites, you know. Enslaved. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So you had. Are they child of God? No. No. Go to um, Exodus chapter 11, and verse 7, real quick. So, people who lived in Egypt. No, you see, you talk about the land. We're talking about the people of the actual descendants. Before before the, um, that land was called Egypt, it was first known as Mizraim. And when you read Genesis chapter 10, Ham, he had a son named Mizraim. Everybody out of that lineage, they was then called Egyptian. That word Egypt came, came, came until later by the Greeks. The Greeks named it after called it Egypt, all right? Those people were, those people who had Israelites, Cat, I mean, uh, and slaves. Right. So they would not be considered child of God. Okay. Yeah. And so so now, how, uh, uh, how did, did you know? Uh, yeah. Where did they come from? They came from the descendants of Ham. The okay. children of Israel came from the descendants of Shem. Okay. Yeah. So where were the descendants of Abraham? The descendants of Shem. Of Shem. Shem. Yeah. So any descendant of Ham not Israelites. That, that is correct. Any descendant of him is, okay. if, if, yeah, exactly. And not all the descendants of Shem are the children of Israel either, or was considered the sons of God. It went through a specific bloodline. It went through a specific okay. lineage. So how can you tell the difference between who was a descendant of Ham mm -hmm. and a descendant of Shem? Exactly. Exodus chapter 11, verse 7. Because and give me um like I say how can you do this one here today that you are on a yeah, part of that you may catch and what should be spirit from hey um Dave come and read oh no my right there uh Jake read the definition of ham for me. Yeah I know the dark color. Yeah no yeah 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 you yeah you know that part. Alright. Um two and verse I'm sorry not twenty one, you know what I'm mean. going um, Exodus chapter 11 and verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. But against right. any of the children of Israel, you hear that word dog again, you hear what? Another nation. Right. You know what? Against yeah. man or beast, uh -huh. that he may know how the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. The Lord put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel, even though two dark skinned races. Now, I'm going to read the definition of him. You said dark skin races. Yeah. So, have you read read this before? The definition of him? Gotcha. Let's read that real quick. All right. This is the definition of Ham. The youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Not the Negroes. He became the progenitor of the dark races, but not the Negroes. Who was considered the Negro here today? See, so that's what, that's what I'm that's what I'm getting at right there. Okay. How can you distinguish today uh -huh. 
who who is not part of him. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, uh -huh. because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, come on. to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee, and they shall be upon thee for a sign. So these curses shall be upon thee for a sign, come on, and for a wonder, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. So when you read this stuff, you it's a sign, it's a sign to let you know who the children of Israel is. It's a sign in the one of life, you know, because how do you I don't disagree with that. Okay. As far as you're coming, you're coming today. Yeah, I could be part of hand and you're talking to me. Okay. Okay. Right, I'm not so, so you mean, you the curse is the curse is gonna do it. Romans 8, I mean the curse happening right now. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna show you these curses that happened that was told to our forefathers. It has came to pass. Exactly. I'm going to show you that. Uh, the first book on Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. The book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. Mm -hmm. So right, with that sign and that Spirit of Christ come upon you, because once you look at this, the Spirit of Christ is supposed to jump in like, whoa, this happened to our people. So the Spirit, read that one time. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. Come on. That we are the children of God. That we are the children of God. Christ said in John 6 and verse 63. It's the spirit that quickens. The word that quickens. The word is an understanding. So now, Deuteronomy chapter 28, starting verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wert not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake you. So it says, look, all these curses are going to come upon you and overtake you. Why? Because the children of Israel didn't keep the commandments. That's why when we said all seven, we went to Daniel chapter 9, verse 11. And it mm -hmm. says the curses were born upon us. All right? So now, jump to verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So when you go into the history of this and just read in the scriptures, you know that they was given to the, uh, the, the we went, went to the Egyptians, we went into the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Greeks, and the Romans had us and everything. But now let's look at this time. For what? Over 400, over 430 years, we was in this man's captivity. A little bit longer than that if you talk about the so-called Native Americans and Hispanics. So I said, how, how, you, how can you include them? How can you include them? You can include anybody. Gotcha. Because you know, you okay. can't, there's no way that we can trace back our lineage all the way back. Yeah. That's why I read the spirit um, bear with of our spirit. And that's actually a sign right there. You ask any other people of any other nation, what is that lineage? And I guarantee they can trace back and say, well, my people is this, my people, especially so called white people, especially them. If you ever sit down to talk to a so called white person and ask them, yo, go back to your living. But you're labeling them, they're not even white. I mean, because. Because they're red. That's why we said so called. That's why it's called you so called black. Because you're not black. You're, you're, you're proud. Your, your, your shoes is black. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we say so called. But I'm saying that because if I say, are right, your children to eat them, you don't know what I'm talking about. See, in the Bible, that's why I mean, you have the king out. You can trace Jesus Christ all the way back to. Abraham. But from Athens, um, Jerusalem was uh, destroyed. The genealogy was lost. We no longer have them. There's no way we can say that we are uh, Amaham or Amos Shem. There's no way we can do that today. Right. So now so he could be a ham. Well, yeah, Hamites know, ham know who they are. No, you don't. You don't. Yeah, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> Yes. Well, they can tell you what tribe they from, uh, what nation what they came, came from. from. Uh, hey, so what? What tribe are you from? I don't uh, know. Oh, you, you don't know. Wait, talk about Ham or Israel? Israel. <laughs> oh, I, Israel. Oh, I, I can that's, tell you of the yeah, tribe of Judah. Huh? Of the tribe of Judah. My yeah, father, my father is so, my father is so-called American black. 
My grandfather is a so-called American black. Even through our lineage, my grandmother on my, on my, on my father's side is a so-called Cherokee Indian. I think I I know like so so there you go. I just said yeah. Right, so now don't, can you change yeah, your right, right, on my on my father's side on my father's that. side my great great grandparents both of them were slaves. Both of them. Well, my, yeah, my, no, no, no. my father was slaves as well. You gotta be able to trace all the way back. You can't because we've been discontinued from our heritage. Okay. So we have to go. Hold on, bro. We have to go by the curses. That's the indicator. He read where the curses are going to be upon you and your children forever. Yeah, so, ones who are not following, following this Bible. No. Are they cursed? Our people have the curses poured upon you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Our people. Our people, our people, the Israelites, have the curses poured upon them for not keeping the commandments. To this day. That's why we out here to find our people and tell them to go back to keeping the commandments. We want blessings, not curses. We want the curses to end. We want to be put back in our homeland like the promise is to Abraham and his seed, that God will be a God to us and he will give the land of Canaan to us for everlasting inheritance. Now, is it easy why you can't go back to Canaan? Well, Christ told us not to go back. I'm, 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 I'm going to read it right now. I found it. I found I found it. First Timothy, one of us. You tell me I don't know the Bible, man. Uh, I know the Bible. Uh, what? If, well, sorry, my statement sorry, should uh, be uh, strange uh, to you. Okay. Christ said, don't go back. Yes. Read a verse. Start a verse first. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 3. And I be uh, as I besought thee to aid, to obey, abide, still at um, Ephesus. When I went into uh, Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. That they teach no other doctrine. Come on. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogy. Neither give heed um, to fables and endless genealogy. Why did he say that? When you go into Acts, you had uh, Timothy. They knew that Timothy father was a non-believer. So what, the, what some of the people was doing to make sure, they would say, well, before we can be able to see, truly see that he's an Israelite, we have to know his records and everything. But right now, the scriptures is letting us know of who we are. It's letting us know of how we can be able to know who we are. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody come up and they don't look, have the same color as me, and then they say, hey, well, you know what, my father was so-called black, Native American Spanish. I can't say, no, you're not, you're lying. I have to go with the word. Just like Christ says in the, um, the, the uh, parable about the wheat and the tares. Mm -hmm. Let the wheat and tares grow together and then the angel, the reaper, is going to come and going to pull those tares so away right. and destroy those that is not his. Alright? So for your for your thought process saying, well, you know, go back and tell your father and everything, like, or, or figure out where your father is, yo, we, like you said, when we came over here with those cargo slave ships, we were separated. Go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 32. I, I, I get that part. But so, so how do you not get to understand where, we, where I'm coming from when I'm saying, look, we, I'm Disagree about the Israel. How God chose to be. I disagree to what God says. There's, there's no way that you can say a person cannot be an Israelite. Go, go to Romans no, 9, what is it, verse 16? You got 13. No, 13, 13. <laughs> you can't even prove that you are Israelite. I, you know, only, only because you. Hold on, no, no, you wrong. You were saying I can't prove it. Did you even give me a chance to even show you? Or did you kind of want to stop me and talk about You said you're part of the, the nation of Israel. Exactly. How so, can you prove that you're part of the nation? So thing? now, go back you to the Bible. All right, the Bible in there. No, no, no. Oh, so you don't believe in the word of God then? Yeah, I believe in the word no, of God. No, you don't, because if, if a man who don't want to go, no, no. If a man who don't want to go to the scriptures, they don't believe in the word of God. One second, one second. Once that Bible was finished, from, from that point on, how do you 
know that you are part of the issue. Go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. You see, see you, you, you want me to speak my words, but no, I'm going to speak the words of God. Because this is what manifested me to understand who I am. So I'm not going to listen to what you want me to speak out of my own words. I'm going to use the words of God. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Ask yourself this question, brother. When did the children of Israel go back into Egypt again on cargo slave ships? Exactly. This Egypt is not talking about modern Egypt. This Egypt is talking about spiritual Egypt, which is in the land of our captivity today. Go to Revelation 11 and verse 8. <laughs> Revelation 11 and verse 8. Down there is the spirit of Egypt. There's no land. Um, physical land Egypt. No, it's still a physical land Egypt, but that land what, Egypt. What, what, where, where were they at? What are you talking about? Uh, the people, Israelites, it was in Egypt. It was in Egypt. Right? In that so, land, right? Exactly. Now you're talking Egypt. about a spiritual Egypt? Right. Wait, wait, wait. So you, you just said you know your Bible, brother. Yeah. Revelation 11, verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street. Of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Meaning what? The spirit of Egypt is resting on its place. You got a dollar on you? Look on the back of your dollar bill for me, brother. Exactly. All the yeah, the pyramids, the customs, the ideology, different idols. Different idol worship, so it had the spirit upon him, just like, for example, this call. Yeah, he got it. Just like the spirit call. He called it as what? Babylon the Great, right? Because why? I still have that same spirit of that same similitude as ancient Babylon. Isaiah 30 and verse 1. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, Come on. that take counsel, but not of me, Come on. and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, Come on. that they may add sin to sin. Come on. Verse 2, that walk to go down into Egypt, and uh -huh. have not asked at my mouth. Walk to go down in Egypt. Our people are still doing that same thing today. What, what's happening? When, when our people have um, issues going on, besides seeking the Lord, they want to go down to the government. They want to talk to the politicians. They want to talk to you. May not do it personally, but our people as a whole, they do do it. All right. So it's that spirit of Egypt. Go back to Deuteronomy twenty-eight verse sixty-eight. Start from the top. Of Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight and verse sixty-eight. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Who? What people on the face of this earth went on a massive slave trade on ships? Oh, you, you don't know. They, they, they're it's not the Israelites. They have yeah, to be yeah. Israelites. So, so, who would those Israelites be today? Because you don't read where they went on cargo slave ships in the Bible. You don't find that prophecy. You could comb and scope it and everything. When I first heard this, I said, "Nah, it surely happened." Because I had a little doubts way before then when I when I first heard this too. I could not find anywhere when they went back to Egypt as slaves or went on cargo slave ships. They walked into Egypt and then they walked out of Egypt after 400 years. Mm. History. Who in history, though? Who can you say in history went into slave went to slavery on ships? The Israelites. The Israelites. Who are the Israelites in today? That's the question I'm asking. Okay, so now. If you Come say on, that, man. That's the question I'm saying. How can you prove that you are Israelite? Oh, my goodness. Did you go on the ship? You're scaring me. You're scaring me right here. Did you go on the ship? My forefathers came over the ships, and that's how we came over here to America. That's how we came to be right now. That's why you have our people as a whole right here, right now. And, and so what people brought, oh, brought us over here? To read it. Read, yeah, keep reading. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, 
by the way, by the way whereof I wait, wait, read that one more time again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With thee in there to talk about the children of Israel. All right? Because this is Moses talking to them in the wilderness, and he's telling them, if you don't keep God's commandments, these curses are going to come to you. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. You know what? The homeland. You're not going to see that homeland again, because why? You're going to be carried off. Come on. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Who sold us all those oxen and blocks as we came off those slaves? So who, who, right now, who is our enemy? Huh? Who, who is our enemy? Russell, who is the one that's killing us right now in the streets? Who sold us? Go to Joel chapter 20. I mean, we're all killing us. Go to Joel chapter 3 and verse 1. Brother, who sold you as a slave? Who sold our people into slavery? You keep saying our people, but you're not saying who is the Israelite. Brother, you, you know what? Go to, let's prove, prove that you're Israelite and prove what, what people brought you over here. You're saying the enemy. Who is the enemy? The enemy is the so called white man who you love because you don't want white man brought us over. Yeah, Joel chapter 3 and verse 1. Start there. So, book of Joel chapter 3 and verse 1. For behold, in those days, and in that time, when I shall bring them, bring them, bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. So we're going to bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Right. This is going to a future prophecy. Jump down to verse 3. Verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people uh -huh. and have given a boy for an hog uh -huh. and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Right, come on. Verse 4. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Tyre and Zidon was the was the Hamites that was living on those lands at that time. Tyre and Zidon, the children of Ham. Okay, come on. And all the coast of Palestine. The Palestinians, who do you know them as today? The Arabs. All right. So the African and Arab Arabs, come on. Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense un upon your own head. Right, so you try to pay me back because I showed favor unto the children of Israel, well, it's going to turn back onto your own head. Come on. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold uh -huh. and have carried unto your temples my goodly, pleasant things. So they destroyed our temples and took our stuff. Even when we came over, uh, on the west base of Africa because we had to flee uh, the persecution of Romans in 70 AD. That's how we got into the western base of Africa. They even took all of our stuff there. Come on. The children also of Judah uh -huh. and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians. The Grecians are known as the so-called white people. It was known as the Greeks at that time. Hold that what you got, brother. Give me first Maccabees 1 and verse 1. This is something that they don't even teach you in the church that is. So, we should know how to white people. I'm gonna prove that. First uh, Maccabees. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what you're so they brought us over here to America. Yeah. Exactly, because we're known as what? The transatlantic slave trade. Right. Okay. So yeah, and they I mean they took slave different places, not just America. Right? So, so say it again? They took um, they, uh, different people in different areas, not just in America. Right, because we have our people that still was in Spain and England, and they went over there and took them and brought them over here to uh, America, took them over there to back into the Netherlands part, kept us over there in uh, Cape Verde, all right, and back over there in England. So they took us square across the board. And but the bulk of us is, was brought over here on the, to America. The bulk of us. And they, yeah. the natives. The natives and the so-called Hispanics, they did that to them too. It started in the Caribbean, then South America, then North America. It was a triangular trade. You leave England, go to Africa, pick up slaves, bring them to the islands, South America, Brazil, all of that. Then you come up to uh, North America. Then you take your money back home. And, and they would take natives with them too. That started with Christopher Columbus. The slave trade started with him. First Maccabees chapter 1 and verse 1. And it happened 
After that, Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, mm -hmm. out, excuse me, out of the land of Chittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes. So you know, you heard about Alexander. He was a Greek, and, it, and all that land was the land of the Greeks. So during that time, when Joel's prophesying this, it was known as the Greeks at this particular time. But he's saying for a future prophecy, I, so we can identify who are these people are today. All right? So now, go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68 for me. So the Africans and the Arabs, they sold us into the hand of the Greeks, of the so-called white men. So the Africans and the Arabs. So us to, to, so us to the so-called white men. Right. And that's when they sold us here into America. So our people, people so our people, the mm -mm. Israelites sold people to the Greeks. Uh -uh. No, the, the, the Hamites. Israel is not Hamites. Right, right. Okay. The Hamites, the Africans. See, that word Africa, it came from a man with a, a white woman, uh, general by the name of Leo Scipio Africanus in 210 BC. He conquered that land in the Second Punic War and named that land after himself. That's why the name was called Africa. Before that, it was only called the land of heaven. Can, can I say something? Yeah. So, this... All this began, the major part of the curses and the slave trade began after 70 AD when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem. We fled into, into Africa and eventually came to the West Coast. And from there, they started gathering us up and sending us into slavery. Exactly. So after 70 AD, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, right. It's all, man, it's documented. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, that part. So, so, so is that it? So like, uh, that's where the name Africa. Give me Psalms 105 and verse 23. I know. Psalms 105 verse 23. Psalms chapter 105 and verse 23. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. So that was so Egypt, it was not, it was called the land of Ham. It was even called Africa. All right? Now, now, now we're looking at today. Ham, well, Israelites, back to America. Okay. No, no, no. They sold us. They sold us. They gathered us up. They sold us to the so-called white man. And the white man came and took us over here to America. and started oxen us all to other White slave masters, slave owners. So, where are the people of Ham today? They are still back over in what? In Africa. Africa. They're over there? Exactly. Uganda, um, Tanzania, uh, Ethiopia, Uganda. Uh, oh, not Ethiopia. Um, on the white side of Ethiopia. Um, where are they? Oh, you know, all those places where you go, like, to the best of parts. You still have some of our people. That's in like Nigeria, Cameroon. Uh, so the places like that, yes, maybe Ethiopia. Yeah, that wasn't part of the Israelites, right? No, sir, they wasn't. Okay. But, um, uh, Philip, when he spoke to the uh, Ethiopian eunuch. Yeah. Why? Why was the eunuch get baptized? Good question. Go to Acts chapter two, verse five. That's the good if, question. If he's, if you're not going to be a child of God, why do you get baptized? That's good. good question. Uh, uh, he went away, he, he yeah. went away and rejoiced. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because he became a child of God. Yeah. I'm he became? Saying, no, he didn't become a child of God. He was already. He just had to be converted from the right. Already. He knew yeah. the book of Isaiah. No, he had. He had the book of Isaiah. Yeah. How did he get the book of Isaiah, brother? I guess he traveled up carried with him. But he didn't know who Christ was. Yeah, because a lot of our people that were scattered abroad. Well, let's say he wasn't, I mean, he was scattered. Go to uh, Jehovah. So go he to was Jehovah. part of his life. Exactly. Go to uh, Isaiah chapter 11. And why is the distinction between Ethiopia and Israel? Well, he was in Ethiopia. There's a law. 
Three times a year, you have to come to Jerusalem and keep the feast. That's what he was coming to. Yeah. I want to say, I know it's 11 and 11 I want, but it's something. To what? Uh, what he says in the brand name. Yeah, 11. 11. 11 and 11. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 11. And it shall come to pass. Start at verse uh, Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 10. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people. So it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Right, so the Gentiles is talking about the children of Israel that was doing the things of the Gentiles. All right, now I'm going to show that here in this week. All right, come on. Verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. The remnant of his people. So going into the same boat. There was considered Gentiles. Remember when, I, when we read the whole day, we said it. Is, the Israelite became Gentile? Exactly. We became Gentiles because we started to become customs of the other nations. Real quick, go to 2 Maccabees 6 verses. Which one? Let's we'll start from the top again. It's going to tell you who the Gentiles are. Right. They're, not, they're not part of the Grecian. Uh, this verse 10 tells you who the Gentiles are that can Gentiles are the people who are not following no listen what, read that verse so Gentiles verse 10 Gentiles is, is basically even of another nation or it was also a representation of even of our people that was following out the other nations I'm going to show you that 2 Maccabees Chapter 6 and verse 6 verse. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 6 and verse 6. Uh -huh. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts. Right, so this is how we convert a person to Gentile, going to the Greek customs. Come on. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So it was commanded by the Greeks, who was in the Greek captivity, that we couldn't be considered calling ourselves Jews. We had to conform in their ways. So that's why when Paul, he was doing his ministry, going to Ephesus, Cappadocia, Macedonia, those places, because that's all the land where the Greeks had. Come on. And in the day, uh -oh. and in the day of the king's birth, every month, mm -hmm. they were brought by bitter constraint to to eat of the sacrifices, and when the feast of Bacchus, Bacchus was kept. The Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Right, read verse 9. Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. And whoso would, whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. And who can conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles? Who can conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles? And being in that also, I forgot the scripture that. Being that also, they would uh, go for another stomach block in front of another person. Yeah, that's the Romans. But we, we, we're trying well, to build right here this first. All right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. That, that's a stomach block, too, because you're stopping him from, from trying to learn here. Yeah. So, so we got to build the corner. All right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So now, that, that's a stomach block right there. So now, read verse 9 again. Verse 9, and whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles shall be put to death. Right, so if you didn't conform yourself to the manners of the Gentiles, you So this is the uh, 1611 King James Version Bible. Oh, first back of Yeah, first back of I mean, I'm sorry, second back of these, 1611. All right, read it one more time, sorry. The book of um, 2 Maccabees, chapter 6 and verse 9. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles shall be put to death. Right, 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 right there. You're saying that whoever don't follow themselves after the Gentiles. Right, the children of Israel. Because they couldn't profess themselves to be a Jew anymore. If they didn't conform themselves to listen to what the king of the priests was telling them, Oh, somebody else's. Yeah, yeah, because we right. put them together. Exactly. Exactly, John. You ever heard of Hellenism? Yeah. So yeah, that's what that is. Yeah. 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 Then might a man have seen the present misery. Yeah. Right. 
For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children. So these was two women that circumcised their children, which teaching the laws and still instead of the right of the Lord of God. Come on. Whom when they had openly led round about the city, the babes hanging that their breasts, that their breasts, they cast them down headlong from the wall. Right. So what ended up happening is, once they saw that these women were doing this, they ended up taking the children, the babies, the Greeks, our right, our our press is doing that time, taking the children and casting them off the walls and killing those children. So you got to think about it. Some of our people were very fearful at the time, so they conformed to those matters. All right. Go to uh, Isaiah 11 and verse 10. Read that for Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10. In that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign, and of the people, to it to it shall the Gentiles seek. His rest shall be glorious. Right. So now, the Gentiles, as we just read, our people was performing themselves in the manner of the Gentiles. We read a little bit earlier in the book of Hosea, how he says that the northern kingdom of Israel was going to be considered no longer people. As we read this down, so anybody who's not following, uh, following the laws of the city of Gentiles, Exactly, at this time. So our people, they have to conform, uh, excuse me, they have to repent and come out of the, the, this man's custom, come out of the heathen's ways. They have to repent of that, all right? We'll, we'll touch on that. Verse 11, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from what's the Hathros uh, and from Cush and from Elam and from Shanel Sh 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 So that's Babylon. So this is all the places where our people were scattered at scattered through because of the captivity of the captivity. Uh, Cush is Ethiopia. Yeah, oh yeah, Cush is Ethiopia. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. And from Hamal, and from the islands of the seas, uh -huh. yeah. and he shall set up an ensign yeah. for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Those who consider no more people come up. And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And gather together the dispersed of Judah that's from the four corners of the earth. This is the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Right, so this is the day of Pentecost. That's the feast day of Noah's first fruit. So when the brother was saying three times out of the year, you have to come. That's one of those times. You have to come up to Jerusalem. Jump down to verse 5. I wanted to stand there because let you know that this was a feast day. Yeah. Verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Out of every nation is Jews, devout men, out of every nation is out of heaven. Uh -huh. Verse 6. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Verse 7, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Verse 8, and now hear we every man in our own tongue. Right. Where when we were born. So now they said, look, they got the, the, the apostles, they had gotten the spirit of the tongue. So where they could be able to communicate people that was outside of the region of Israel. All right, come on. Verse 9. Par Parthians. Parthians, come on. Medes. The Medes. And Elamites. Elamites. And dwellers in Mesopotamia. All right. And in Judea. Uh huh. And in Cappadocia. Come on. And Pontus and Asia. Uh -huh. Pastor, and forgive, come on. Forgive. And pamphlet in Egypt. And in the parts of Libya. And Egypt and the 
parts of living. So when we're looking at Egypt and living, living, what you have right next to that part? Come on. And sorry. Sorry, come on. And strangers of Rome. And strangers of Rome, right? That's why we have the book of Romans. Come on. Jews and proselytes. So when that word proselytes he was talking about, this is somebody who has converted back into the faith. Come back into it because they was keeping the Gentile customs. Alright? So that proselyte is not talking about people of other nations because guess what? Only the children of Israel can come up there and just go see us. So you're saying all the people who left the faith converted back to uh, to be an Israelite or proselytes? They was considered proselytes because they had to convert back because at one time they was keeping what? The laws of animal sacrifice. They didn't understand of what they was keeping. They didn't understand the understanding part. So I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you're saying the proselytes are different or saying they were the Israelites and they were the people. They were the ones who left and now they're called proselytes. They can't come back to the government border. Exactly. Um, Jesus chapter 2 verse 11. So why would it, I mean, why would it be called proselytes? They're not Israelites. No, because they're coming back to the custom of the church. They wasn't keeping the custom of the church. They was keeping the customs of the Gentiles. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Ephesians 2 and 11. That's how they came to that part. Because they, every, all Israel was then the part. You remember when after the Eden and Israel split? You had Rehoboam, he started keeping up the gods. And then they were carried away into the uh, Assyrian captivity. You had people in Judah who, was, who started following the other gods. Once he went to Babylonia, many of them stayed outside of Israel. They didn't go back. They wanted to still continue to do what they wanted to do. Yeah, but I was saying, that's like before the fourth split, they have possible like the fourth split. Back in the day. You didn't have a verse on that? I know it was in the Old Testament. If you don't have a verse on that, you have to cover your mouth, yeah. brother. There was no possible life before. Do you, do, you have, do you have a time frame of which book or what Bible? They traveled with the um, Israelites on the wilderness. They weren't possible. They weren't possible. They, weren't they, possible. Possible. they was multitudes who was once again servants. That's where it goes back to when we was reading about the, um, when we purchased them and bought them. They was not considered possible. They was forced to then, if they was going to be our servants, they was compelled to do our work. That was not saying that it was converters. That's not saying that. And, and for example, we up in this man's thing. We can't do our own laws, right? We have to do it according to this man's laws, and that's what we're going to get judgment from us. So when we have um, people that's in our land and we rule over them, mm -hmm. they are compelled to do our laws. That doesn't make them a proselyte or a conflict. It don't make them that. It makes them our servants. Can I ask a question? What would be the purpose of coming to somebody? Isaiah 60 verse 10. Isaiah 60 verse 10. Did the Pharisees deal with other nations? Did they deal with any other people? They they hated everybody else. That's later on. Let's not get on that topic. Yeah. Yeah. I, Isaiah sixty verse ten. This is this will be their person's purpose, especially when the kingdom comes. Come on. Uh, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter sixty and verse ten. And the sons of the strangers shall build up thy walls. And the sons of the strangers shall build up. And their kings shall minister unto thee. And kings shall minister unto the children of Israel. Meaning what? They're going to serve us. All right? What's that on Zephaniah about coming up to the feast? Is that Zephaniah? Zechariah. Ze Zechariah. 11, 15, 11, 15, 14, 14 and. Uh, go, go to go 14 and so. For in my wrath I smoke. But in my favor have I had mercy on him. Right, in his wrath he smoked the children of Israel, he cast us off, but in his favor he had mercy upon us. So as a result, once we start doing what is righteous, it's going to be king. That's what Christ says in Revelation chapter 2. Um, he that endured until the end, um, he that overcome it, so he get power, like he, like he was given for him, so rule over the nations. Come on. 
Verse 11. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. Mm. They shall not be shut day nor night. The men may bring into thee the forces of the Gentiles. That they bring into us the forces of the Gentiles. They all the treasures. Remember we read in Joel chapter 3, they stole all the treasures. Everything that was pertaining to us, they have to bring our stuff back. Yeah. And then they also have to give us their stuff. This is how, like, for example, you remember when uh, King Solomon, he was reigning? And the queen of Sheba, she gave him all these trains of good stuff. That's a foreshadow to the king to come, to the, uh, the king to, uh, kingdom to come. All right? Come on. And their kings may be brought. Verse 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall mm. perish. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Hold that. We're going to come back to it. We're going to see now in Zechariah 14. Zechariah. Chapter 14, verse 17. And, that sh and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Even upon them shall be no rain. When you have no rain, you have drought. When you have drought, you're going to have famine. When you have famine, you do not. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come and come not up and come and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacle. To keep the feast of tabernacles, what? To serve us. Come on. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacle. Come on. And of all nations that don't serve the children of Israel on these feast days. He is putting out the feast of tabernacle. But it's all the feasts. Come on. Like Verse 20. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the, the bowls before the altar. Right. It's going to be perfect. No dents, no scratches or anything. Perfect. Come on. Yeah. Every pot in, in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see if there is. And in that day, there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Right. So they're not coming in there and, 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 and disturbing stuff as they did in time past. If they don't come and serve us, most of says, look, they're going to just be destroyed. They ain't no talk about something. We're going to go over there and try to take the land. No. Go back to Isaiah 6 and read verse um, 14. concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Right, so this is Edom. Edom, as you're going to understand who they are today, all right? You're going to rise up against them, against the battle. This Edom was always a warrior type people, even for the skin. When Esau was born, he says, he's going to get the, the blessing was part of him saying, he's going to conquer land, but by the sword. That's how he got to conquer all his lands, by the sword. What one person does that? Who still two this today, going into different countries, farming, set up the barbers, set up sanctuaries, and set up their the What one people? Exactly. I can't, I can't say this one. It is one people. You don't see, do, do you see the, 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 the Chinese or anybody come over here to America doing this? See, even today, we fight them. We fight Mexicans and each other here. So, so I said it again? Don't we fight against each other here? Exactly. So now, that 
No, 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 no. I agree with you on the point. That's why I hate the stupid statement, Black Lives Matter. Because here's the thing, Black Lives Matter is a facade when we also are still in ourselves. I can always go back to come out of this stuff because this right here is not going to give me salvation anyways. It's the stuff that you're saying right now, how do we start loving our neighbors, loving our brothers and sisters, stop killing one another? That's the stuff that we do do. That's the stuff that's going to get salvation. So now I agree with you upon that we are killing ourselves and the Bible speaks on that. But because you brought up this topic, I much I can deal with this. So then we need to understand this was given to us, and now we need to come into a holy construct so we can start showing our love to one another to stop killing each other, stop robbing from each other, stop doing each other dirty, stop having that evil eye to one, towards one another. We can definitely get back into that, but because of this, you, you asked the question, I want to deal with this first, and then I can go into it. Trust and believe, because that's all, always my favorite topic. This is not it because this don't really give you that salvation. This gives you this mind to fuck you up because you know some things. You know some times. Alright? Uh, over die chapter one and three where you gonna go. Alright, verse two. Verse two. One again. Verse two. Behold, I have made thee small among the heaps. Thou art great, greatly despised. The pride of thy heart has deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. It says, Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. What is the political term that they like to call the so called white people? Caucasians, right? Where did they get that word Caucasians from? The Caucasus of Georgia, Mount the Western, Caucasus Mountains. So when it says, Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, this is the proof of the future prophecy that you know who the children of Israel, I mean, our children of Edom is, who is the children of Esau is. Come on. Go that far. Yes, you can go that far. Google it when you get a chance. Georgia Mountain, Russia, the Caucasus Mountains. And you're going to know what I'm saying. Because now all of these are going to help. It's against all of these. All the white people was in that mountain. Hey, Jake, you, by any chance, you don't have the book of Edom when it was up in the mountains and it was um, cave columns, calling them cave dwellers. You don't got that book, do you? I forgot the name of that book. No, but the so-called... You got it. Who is Edom? That's, I think, who it is. Who is Edom book? Well, the people, the people that call themselves Jews now, that's where they from. Yes. The from, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's up there. Up that way. But go ahead. All right. Whose habitation is hot. That who, says... Whose habitation is hot. That's why you see here in America, high squat skyscrapers, they want to be in the biggest penthouse. Whose habitation is hot. That's, who says what? That says in his heart... Who shall bring me down to the ground? Who's going to bring me down to the ground? Because I'm trying. That's why he said, you know, God bless America. America is man uh, stands for heaven because of that pride that's going on. Come on. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. What is their national birth? That's all. The eagle. They exalt themselves because the eagle is a mighty hunter. They, they, they're a hunter of prey. All right? So they are. They can see it and they have that high pride come on and see it. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. Though thou set thy nest among the stars. When did that happen in the what? The space travel. They go up there and play. If you are, well, I don't know if I should go that far. I understand. You can go that far. Because guess what? You may not travel out of space. You may not look at this. Who has the biggest uh, space force in the world? Who has the biggest space station in the world right now? Yeah, you had Russia who had it with their Sputnik doing the space wars that, you know, going for and everything. Russia beat them, but then guess what? America came back, but even Russia and America did the same people. They just called right. themselves different, different names. But they did the same people. All right? So now jump down to verse 10. This is the point where, this is the ultimate point. I wanted to show you this so you can understand who is Eden first, and then I'm going to show you verse 10 as far as how they're not going to be amongst us. Read verse 10. Obadiah, verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall come thee. When you read Ezekiel, it tells you about they had a perpetual hatred for us. All right, come on. And thou shalt be cut off forever. And it says, thou shalt be cut off forever. Come on. In, in the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one of them. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. 
Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Right, because we had was known as the brother of the but Esau, they broke that during that time when he was being carried away by Babylon. They came, they helped for the friction of it, and then on top of that, they burned down our temple. And now today, they're killing us. All right, they killed us in the street when they hold themselves not guilty. Uh, let's see here. Jump down to verse uh, 17. All right, verse 17. So he said they're going to be cut off forever. Come on. But upon Mount Zion shall be delivered, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken. There shall not be any remaining of the house of Israel, I mean, of Esau, excuse me. So Esau, they're going to be destroyed. This was a prophecy. So when Christ comes, what is that, um, Jake? He that cometh from Jerusalem, Isaiah 63? What is that it? Or 65? Say it again. He that cometh from Jerusalem. 63. 63. Get that. Isaiah 63 and verse 1. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, and verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom? Who is this that cometh from Edom? Who is this that's coming from this land? All right? The, the land of Edom is actually desolate right now, so this is a huge prophecy. When you go into Revelations, and you read chapter 18, you know that it's told about Babylon the Great. All right? Matter of fact, hold that, hold what you got. Give me um, Psalms 137 and read verse mm. 8. Start there. Psalms 137 and verse 8. Psalms 137 and verse 8. Psalms 137 and verse 8. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. It says, O daughter of Babylon, who ought thou to be destroyed. So it's talking about this specific people. Right. Is representation or coming forth as ancient Babylon. Come on. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Has served us. We just read that open die. Uh, how they served us, they cut us off in a, in a poor affliction. Come on. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. Dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Kill them off. Come on. Uh, Psalms 138. No, 130. I mean, it goes down. That was. Oh, I'm sorry, brother. Um, start at verse. Um, let's read verse seven. Verse seven. Yeah, yeah. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, "Raise it, raise it, raise it," meaning destroy it. Come on. Even to the foundation thereof. Uh -huh. O daughter of Babylon, yeah. who ought to be destroyed. Right, raise it, raise it. Meaning what destroyed the temple, destroyed Jerusalem on that day. And we were being persecuted and taken out of the land by the Babylonians. All right? Read that one more time, brother. Verse 7. Verse 8. Yeah, read verse 8. All right. All right read verse 7. Okay. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, Race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. I mean, it destroyed Jerusalem. That's what they did. Come on. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. Exactly. So go back to Ezekiel 35, behold that, and you give me Isaiah 61. And read verse 63, verse 1 again. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, and verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Eden? With thy garments from Basra. And thy garments from Basra. Basra was the capital of Edom. So what it's talking about now, because like I said, that is, Edom is no more. It's, no, it's not a, the, the, uh, excuse me, my, um, see, uh, what's the name of uh, Basra, uh, the country I can't think of, uh, Edom's land, Sierra. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sierra was underneath uh, Israel. It's no longer even, even habitable anymore. So now let's talk about Bozeman, the capital, something like the capital here. You got D.C., you got New York, et cetera, those big states, all right? So it says, who is this that coming with thy garments from Bozeman? 
that's coming into Eden. Come on. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak righteousness might mighty to say. Verse 2. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? And his garments that treadeth in the wine fat, when it's talking about like if you step on those grapes, you have blood. So this is talking about the, the, the war. So go to um, Revelations 18. Revelations 18. Sorry, verse 1. This is the book of Revelation. Chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lighted with his glory. Come on. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Greek is fallen. Is fallen. Babylon the Greek is fallen. Is fallen. Meaning what? It started the second time because you have it. Ancient Babylon is fell, now it's talking about Babylon the Great is fallen. So it's fallen, it's fallen. Come on to it. has become the habitation of devils. Right. Hold that. Go to Revelation 14 and read verse 8. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 8. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city. Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So it goes back to what we were saying, brother, where Americans could go anywhere, and what do they do? They implement their democracy, their politics. I was watching a show, and it was, uh, well, I was watching with my wife, and it was like that. And it was called Madam Secretary on CBS. And we was looking at it, and basically, you know, the Secretary of State, they deal with foreign affairs. They calling up other countries and trying to dictate of what they can do in their own country. That's what America do. They establish um, their diplomacy in other countries and force them to fall under democracy. Force them to do what they want to do rather than letting those countries be their own countries. They, they do that, but as they're doing that, they put an evil and wickedness over there. That's why, for example, I'm going to use this for example. You have the Arab um, family that comes over, right? And, and I saw this all the time when I was going to school. The little, uh, their daughter, they would come, they have the hijab, long dress, and everything like that. They come, they're doing what they need to do. They, they still keep it, their customs and right. But then over time, you start seeing they come into America's custom. And then you start seeing that same, same um, female that had the hijab, and the dresses and everything like that is now wearing pants, now wearing a modest apparel. And then you would think that the father or the mother would say something, but damn it, they don't want to say anything too, because why? Of a devil my system, America's custom. So when it says drinking the wine of their fornication, meaning what of their filth to teaching them their doctrine, those these things is wrong. And our people also have drunk with this. That's why people is in madness here today. That's why people goes back to what you're saying, brothers. We have that hatred for one another because of why? Of how America has dealt with us and put that in our mindset rather than us coming back to our God and to understand how we should deal with one another. All right? Jump down to verse um, uh, 13. Verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from his forth. Yea, say of the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I look, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one set like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, in his hand. A sharp sickle. And his hand a sharp sickle. So this is the Christ. Come on. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust in thy sickle and reap. Thrust in thy sickle and reap. Kill. Goes back to what I was saying as far as that. The, the wheat and the tares. Thrust in the sickle and reap. Come on. For the time has come for thee to reap. For the harvest 
harvest of the earth is ripe. But now is the time for you to reap. Now it's time to go ahead and take those tares out and get my wheat, get my people. Kill the other people and get my people and bring them back, those who have served the Lord in righteousness. Come on. Verse 16. And he that sat on the coal on the cup, first in his sickle, on the earth, and the earth was weak. Come on. Verse 17. Another, and another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. So this is now his warriors, his people, that Christ coming with his arms. Come on. And another angel came out from the altar. Which had power over fight, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. So, thrust in the sickle, for the grapes are fully ripe, mean what? It's time to now purge. Come on. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth. And cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. Cast it into the great wine press of the great wrath of God. Come on. And the wine press was trodden without the city. And the blood came out of the wine press. Mm -hmm. Even into the horse right. Even into the horse's right. You know what? That blood, that wolf. So when we read reading Isaiah 63, most Christ is going to come forth and send forth war unto them. He's going to kill the majority of Edom, and Edom of the people that is still going to be the remnant of them, they won't have to serve, but even then, that last Armageddon, that last war, that's when he's going to ultimately destroy them. That's why Holy God said he's going to be completely destroyed. When he was about to be uh, crucified, he was speaking to Pontius Pilate. That's the question. That's what's not, see, that's the thing. That's what's not being taught to our people that Christ is coming here to make war because he's coming together with his people. Give me, um, give me, um, go back to Revelation 15. <laughs> You can be punishing the nations for what they've done to us. And let's read verse 6. Because remember you had... 18 6. Well, um, David oh, okay. got it. Okay. Remember you had said about the other nations, right? What about their sins, right? Well, why, 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 why are we not fighting now? Because there's no power Thank in our fight. Thank you, we, we don't have no power in our fight right now, brother. People over there tell us something. We have arms. It's like, man, we're going to be started. That started, we tried it. Uh, David Foster down there in Brook Road tried that. I mean, they knew, those two knew they were Israelites. If you research their stuff, they know they were they was Israelites. All right? So that's also another good point that you can research and look at. But nevertheless, they tried and they failed. That's why Christ says, bless, uh, you got to have patience. We have to have patience. we got to wait on the Lord for this. we got to wait. Because if we try to do it right now on our own power and our own time, we're going outside the order of the world. So right now, this right now, just like how um, Christ told Peter, I'm going to make you fishers of men. And then when you read in Jeremiah, he says those fishers would then turn into hunters. All right? So you got to wait into a point of time. See, our people, when they hear this, they hear this, or they, you know, I'm not saying you you doing this, but some of our people are like, tomorrow, why not try to do, not do it now? If we try to do it right now, we, we are sinning against God and Christ, and we try to take things in our own hand rather than being patient and waiting for that time. All right? So let's go back to what you were saying as far as the nations and stuff. As far as like, why they not being punished and everything. They, those, they will. Revelation chapter 18 and read verse um, 6. Um, actually, read verse uh, 4 first. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven crying, from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. That ye be not partakers of her sins, mm. and that ye receive not of her pledge. Right, so come out of this man's custom. My people, the most high's people is the children of Israel. That's why he says, come out of her, my people. Come on. Verse 5. 
for her sins have reached into heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Verse 6, we warned her even as, the, as she rewarded you, and double into her depth according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. Right. So now he said, look, all the things that, that this um, Babylon is great, that has done, she has done, when it's that cup, double and double. And then once it gets to that full of that cup, then that wrath is going to come. But before that wrath is going to fully come, he's having patience and long suffering with his children so that we can come back into it. We can come into that mercy and come into repentance before it actually does happen. He's waiting patiently with us. All right? Uh, Revelation, read that All right, Revelation chapter 21, verse 12. And had a wall great and high. So this is the kingdom, brother. It had a wall great and high. And had 12 gates. Yeah. And at the gates, 12 angels. It had 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. Come on. And names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. The next thing. Of the children of Israel. Israel. You know that's bigger to the That's not bigger to the Mm-mm. No, Revelations, go back, go back to Revelations 1. You say that, Revelations 1 and verse 1. This is literal. Revelations chapter 1 and verse 1. You give me um, John chapter, go back, go to John chapter 14 and verse 1. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 1 and verse 1. We're now. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave it to him. To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Things that shortly must come to pass. So remember, we read Isaiah chapter 60, verse 10, how they have to build up our walls. Which is that this, this tip, this right here, is them building up our walls. All right? So these are things that shortly must have come to pass. Come on. And he sick, sick, he sick, and he signified it by his angels. It's a servant John. The servant John. All right. John chapter 14 and verse 1. All right. 14 and 1. St. John. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Come on. In my father's house are many mansions. In my father's house there are many mansions. Come on. If it were not so, I would have told you. If it wasn't so, it wasn't told. But it was so to us. It what? It's 12 gates. At those 12 gates, you got 12 angels. Which is written for the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. Come on. I go to prepare a place for you. Come on. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Right. That where I am, there ye may be also. Right. So now go back to Revelation 21 again. Alright. 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 Read, read from the from the beginning of chapter uh, uh, verse 12. Yep. Yeah. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the twelve gates, twelve angels. Uh -huh. And names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Right, so this is for the twelve tribes of Israel. For them. That's why the name is written on it. If your name is not on that, you cannot get into it. If your name is not on the, tri uh, the tribe of Levi, Asher, Judah, or anything like that, then you can't get into those gates. You can't get into that land. Come on. On the east, three gates. Uh -huh. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. Uh -huh. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Right, so the 12 apostles, those 12, they consider now the foundations. They're going to have their high power in the kingdoms. Come on. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city. Now he's going to measure the city. Come on. And the gates thereof, and the wall thereof, and the city lie on four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. So they equal as, as the, the width and the length. It all equals. Come on. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. 12,000 furlongs. That's equivalent from here in um, Virginia all the way down to uh, to Louisiana. That's how long, that's how 12,000 furlongs is. So you're thinking about the, 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 the height and then the length. They all equal the parts. That's why Paul, I mean not Paul, excuse me. That's why John the Revelator, he said, it looks like a, uh, okay. it's coming out of heaven because of how high it is, how beautiful it is, how majestic it is. Come on. The length at, come on. The
the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof an hundred and forty and four cubits according to the measure of man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of, of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And, right. the, and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a... Chalcedony. Chalcedony, the fourth, an emerald, the fifth, sardonyx, and the sixth, sardius, the seventh, chrysolite, and the eighth, beryl, the ninth, a topaz, and the tenth, a chrysoparasus, yeah, chrysoparasus, and the eleventh, a jansen, and the twelfth, and Imithites. Yeah, so this is all the jewels of the emeralds that represents the 12 tribes of Israel, as you remember uh, Aaron's breastplate here. Uh, and, uh, I believe the heaven's not being in that. Well, that's what I said. Uh, he go into the trip of all these houses, many mansions. Where, where's the Lord's house? Uh, no, no, it doesn't mean a big house. You might. That's why I said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Where does the Lord's house dwell? Yeah, I'm not thinking of it. This is, this is right here, just on earth. So this is just on earth. We, you can't even, you can't even fathom what is in the Most High's realm. You can't even fathom what is outside of this. This is just talking about here on earth. You think this place will be on? You do. This place will be on. On earth. You think? Say, I'm going to say you do realize that yeah, the, come on, the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven is on earth. How long are we going? Just keep going, going. Okay. The kingdom of heaven is on earth. The kingdom of heaven is being established on earth. Huh? The whole world. Those who are following Christ. Those who are following Christ are part of the kingdom of heaven. No. So, brother went over a whole bunch of scriptures showing you that the kingdom is going to be here. And the other nations have to build. They got to build it for us. That kingdom is here. Go to uh, Revelation 21. Start from verse 1. It's right here. It's right here on earth. God is going to come and dwell with us on earth. Matter of fact, matter of fact, go to chapter 20 and start at verse 8. All right, Revelation chapter 20, verse 8. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. So this is after the so-called white man has done his thousand years in punishment. He's going to be in captivity a thousand years. They got to build up our kingdom. Then he's going to be let loose so that he can deceive the other nations. Like the brother mentioned, the Armageddon, the great battle. Go ahead. God and Magog. God and Magog. To gather, to gather them together to battle, uh -huh. the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Come on. And they went up on the bread of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints. So they're going to try to surround us in our kingdom. Christ is coming with us and establish the kingdom on earth for a thousand years to get rid of sin, period, before the Most High himself comes. Read. And... The beloved city and fire came down from God out so, of heaven. So they surrounded us, trying to attack us. The Most High coming in, and He will destroy them. Fire will come down from heaven. Go ahead. And devoured them. Mm -hmm. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Right, like He ran over die, they're going to be completely wiped out. They're not going to exist no more. Where the beast and the false prophet are, uh -huh. and shall be tormented day and night forever meaning, and ever. Meaning they never, their spirits will be destroyed, they never coming back. Go ahead. And I saw a great white door, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Right, so that's the most high coming. He's coming to dwell with us. Now go to chapter 21, start at verse 4. Christ has his own throne. Christ is not the most high. Christ is not his father. Go ahead. Revelation 21 verse 1. 
and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Uh -huh. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. So the first rulership and the first and the people are done away. Now it's going to be Christ and the Israelites underneath the Most High God ruling this earth. That's what it's all about. Rulership and forcing the other nations to keep God's commands. That's why there's so much wickedness on this earth right now. Yes, we're going to force them. We're going to force them. Watch. Hold on. Hold tight. Hold tight. Hold tight. No. Nobody. Who on, who on this planet, other than repentant Israelites, is keeping God's law? No, they're not. They don't follow the Bible. No, they don't keep God's commandments. You don't think you don't think anybody else is following the Bible? No. Repentant, they people like in Christianity, you claim to follow uh, to follow Christ in the Bible, but who actually does it? When's the last time you kept the feast day? Okay then. Did Christ keep feast days? So why don't you? First Peter two and uh, twenty one. Give me Second Corinthians five. Second Corinthians five. Five. So when the last time you been over? We can't go there. Like I said earlier, Christ said, "Don't go back." Jehovah. Jehovah. The words of Christ. We're supposed to follow Christ. And, and Nate. Yeah. The unleavened. Um, first Corinthians 5 and verse 6. Okay. And then you can also do um, Acts chapter 21 and verse 5. All right. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. Your glory is not good. Start at verse 7. Verse 7, okay. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new law, as ye are a leaven. So in the Old Testament, like you said, what was leaven? Right. So that represents sin. So he's saying, so on, when Passover time came, you had to get rid of all the leaven out of your house, right? Or you would be cut off from your people. That was the law. If you didn't, if you partook of anything that had leaven in it, you would be cut off from your people. Meaning you would be either exiled or put to death. Go ahead. So, yeah, go ahead. For even Christ, our Passover, is the sacrifice for us. Right. He gave his life as our living sacrifice. Yes. Go ahead. Therefore, let us keep. Therefore, let us keep the feast. What feast is that talking about? Well, we just read, not with the unleavened. What, with unleavened. Not with leaven. Not with leaven. So what feast um, you had to abstain from leaven? What feast? Yeah, what? Okay yeah. then, you know that then. So what's okay. this talking about? What's Paul saying? Let us keep. Let us keep the feast. What feast he talking about? Keep reading. We're not so reading for the top again. All right. <laughs> purge out, purge out, therefore the old leaven. So get the sin out of you. Go ahead. That ye may be a new law, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Right, Christ was perfect. He was sacrificed for us. He was that perfect sacrifice. Without blemish. Continue. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven. So let us therefore keep the feast. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? Let us keep the feast. So what is he saying? What is he saying? Therefore, let us keep the feast. What feast is he talking about? He's listening to me. He following my instructions. What feast is he talking about? I don't know. You tell me. I just you said it yourself. The Passover. I'm guessing. Finish it out. Finish it out. Keep reading. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity. And true. Right. So we that's supposed right we there. supposed to keep huh? Is that the feast there? 
We supposed to keep the feast without sin, bro. That's what it's going into. Now, give me, uh, you got First Peter, First Peter two and twenty one. This is because in y'all in Christianity, everybody claimed they love the Lord. It's not. It's, it's not even literal. What do you mean it's not literal? What, what is he what saying? Was uh, there any malice? Was there any malice? Go to Acts chapter 20. It says, and what are we not supposed to have 16. Can you keep continuing? Read that. Read that. Okay. No, there's no Let's need. Go back. No, there's, there's no need. That's talking about the Passover. You said it yourself. No. I'm you not, said it yourself. I'm guessing so the feast. The question. Because they have, they have so I asked more, you. I, what feast are they talking about? Because they have more than one feast. There's only one where you had to have unleavened bread. Give me Exodus uh, 20, I mean, Exodus 12 and uh, not 16. What about Pentecost? Um, hey, read, read that Acts. Since he said Pentecost, read that Acts. Uh, Acts 20 and all. Uh, yeah, they had more than one feast of the same. Right, right. All right. The Acts chapter 20, verse 16. For Paul had determined to sail by uh, Ephesus. Ephesus. Uh -huh. Ephesus. Because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hastened. Why? Why did he haste? If it were possible, if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Right. So he wanted to go to Jerusalem to keep the feast. But he couldn't. He couldn't. So he got the feast there. Right, 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 right there. A Passover is a feast, right? Yes. Okay. And then you got Pentecost. Yes. So. What he's talking about, the Passover or the Pentecost? Well, <laughs> he's talking about, um, and that's what I'm trying to get the answer. What? What is he talking about, the Passover or the Pentecost? Well, he was talking about Passover in Corinthians. Where did it say that? Read that again. Because right. it's the feast. I'm, I'm going to show you. It's the feast of unleavened bread. Seven, really slow. Read that one again. Unleavened bread. All right. Verse 16. For Paul had determined now, to sell. Now go back to First Corinthians five verse seven. Read that really slow. Now we, I'm, I'm gonna go to Exodus first. Okay. Well, read, read that. Read yeah, that. Exodus. Nice bread during Passover. Sixteen. They use unleavened bread. Read it again. Read it again. Right? No, 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 no. <coughs> Pentecost is first fruits. Uh, go ahead. Verse sixteen. For Paul had determined to sell by Ephesus, uh -huh. because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hastened. If it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Right. So that's one. That's one. You got Pentecost, you got Tabernacles, and you got Passover. Now, read that. This is Exodus 20, I mean Exodus 12 and 17. And correct me what feast is he talking about? He's talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Give me uh, Luke, Luke, Luke 20, I mean, uh, yeah, Luke 20 and 1. Luke 20, we can ready to give you right here, right here, right here. Go ahead, go ahead. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 17. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. The feast of unleavened bread, go ahead. For in this same, same day have I brought you, your armies out of the land of Egypt. Okay, so the feast of unleavened bread is also called Passover. So unleavened bread. He's saying, let us observe the feast, not with leaven. You ain't supposed to have leaven in you. Give me that. Um, Luke 20 and verse 1. All right, Luke chapter 20, verse 1. And it came to pass that on one of those days, as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel. Right. Okay. All right, Luke chapter 22, verse 1. Now the feast of unleavened bread the drew feast, not. The feast of unleavened bread. Go ahead. Drew not, which is called the Passover. Which is called Passover. So that's what he's talking about. He's talking about Passover. We're supposed to keep that, even though we can't go back to Jerusalem, man. Give me Luke. Since you're in Luke, give me Luke 21 you're saying, and 24. You're not, you're not following the Jesus. We following Christ. We, yes, we are. Watch, watch. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. Don't be mind. Go ahead, read this. Luke 21 and 24. And they shall fall. Time out, time out. If the commandment is to go to Jerusalem, and you're not going to Jerusalem, you are disobeying. Do we have to follow Christ? Yes. 
Okay, then. Watch this. Right. Right. Read that. Read Luke that. Luke 21, 24. Uh, Peter. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword uh -huh. and shall be led away captive into all nations. So we were led away captive into all nations. Come on. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Right. So the other nations are over there now. Give me start back in 20. First, give me verse 15. Give me 15 first, and then jump to 20. The commandment says we are Lord of Jerusalem. Celebrate. Celebrate. Yes. yes. Another prayer. Yes. And the, the commandment, commandment, commandment said if we broke them, we were going to go ahead and this. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Let's look at it now. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Make it quick. Command, it says go to Jerusalem and celebrate the Passover. Uh huh. And, uh, if we're not doing that right now, we're not following that command. So you're saying we're in the midst of sin? Are we following that command? Go ahead, bro. Read, go ahead. All right. Read verse 15 first. 21 and 15. 21 and 15? Yeah, verse 15 first. All right. For I will give you a mouth. A mouth. Uh -huh. A mouth. I'm sorry. For I will give you a mouth. And wisdom. Uh, and wisdom. Go ahead. Which all your adversaries should not be able to gainsay nor resist. Right, because we're going to use Christ's word. Now jump to verse 20. Okay. Because this is talking about 70 AD in Athens. Come on. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. That's talking about General Titus and Spasvasius of the Roman army. Go ahead. Then know that the desolation thereof is not. So Jerusalem was about to be destroyed. Come on. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. So if you in Judea, flee to the mountains. Go ahead. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. So whoever's in Jerusalem or Israel, depart out. It's about to be destroyed. Watch. Go ahead. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. See? Let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Because we still was going back to keep feasts. Like you talking about, like we talk about on the piece of unleavened bread. Go ahead. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So now you get ready to go into great captivity for a long time. Go ahead. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. So all that wrath came upon our people. But he said, don't go back. Don't enter back into it. So we want we don't follow Christ. Now, first Peter two, first Peter two and twenty one. You 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 look we we gonna we gonna follow we gonna follow Christ as it is written. He said, Don't go back. It's given to the Gentiles. It's given to them. Told us not to go back. Go ahead. First Peter chapter two and verse twenty one. This is Paul. Everybody love to follow Paul. Listen For to even here are two. Were ye called? Uh huh. Because Christ also suffered for us. So he suffered and gave his life for the children of Israel, so that they could give repentance and make peace between them and the Most High God. That's why he came. Go ahead. Leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Read that again. Read that again. Yeah, read that again. Follow his example. This right. is the book of First Peter, chapter two and verse twenty-one. For even here are two. Were ye told? Mm -hmm. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Leaving us an example. Go ahead. That ye should follow his steps. That we should follow his steps. So the Lord told us, don't go back. Jerusalem's going to get destroyed. Don't go back. That happened back in 70 AD. That's what you're talking about, right? Yes. Okay, but well, what about now? What do you mean, what about it? Man, give me Ezekiel 20. Uh, give me Ezekiel 20 and 30. Said, <laughs> we are to keep the feast. Are we supposed to keep the feast, yes or no? Yes. We keep okay. them in, we keep them in our part. dwelling just like we did in Exodus 20. You only don't follow that with them. No, I'm, we, we follow it. We're fo brother, we just established. Christ said don't go back. Christ, so said, we, don't go Christ back. said don't go back. We're keeping them in our dwelling. I'm done, man. Go ahead, read that. Listen, listen. Uh, Go ahead, read that. Ezekiel the Lord, chapter 20. We got sent into captivity. We got to wait until he come and gather us back. 34. See, right now, you have the ability to go with these Jews. Ezekiel chapter Nobody 20, verse 34. It's given to the Gentiles. Listen to this. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered. So all the countries we've been scattered into, he going to bring us out. 
He going to bring us out. Go ahead. With a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Because while he's destroying the other nations, that's when he's going to rescue us. Come on. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Uh huh. And there will I plead with you face to face. So he's going to deal with us in the wilderness. He's going to teach us the commandments face to face. And he's going to bring us into the bond of the covenant. Like y'all claim in Christianity that you're already in the new covenant. No, we're not. Israel is not in that covenant yet. No, that's right. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. And by plead, he means judge us. Give me a Isaiah. Uh, Three and uh, thirteen. What we're doing is reading directly out of this and following this, and not our own you're not thoughts. Asking, you're not asking the question. So how how we keep the feast today? We keep it in our own dwelling. How? We gather together and keep it in our own dwelling. We're rehearsing. We're rehearsing the righteous acts. The same things that we're gonna have to do when we go into the wilderness. See, we can't go back as a nation into Jerusalem right now and keep our feast days. It's given to the other nations right now. Until, they, until, the, until their time is over. Go ahead, read that. What, what this is the book. This is how he's going to plead with us. Go ahead. Yeah. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 3 and verse 13. The Lord standeth up to plead. It standeth to judge the people. That's how he judges. That's how he pleads. By judgment. And you, and your, your actions better be good. According to his commandments. Now where was we at? Yeah, keep going. Okay. Um, and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, said the Lord God. Face to face. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. See, you, we have to go under the rod. We have to be corrected. Go ahead. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Uh huh. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. Those that don't want to serve him in spirit and in truth. We got to keep commandments. And them, and them that transgress against me. Uh huh. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. Right. So if you don't want to, just like before, when we was in the wilderness, we had those brothers and sisters that was hard-headed, and they did not make it into the land. He made them die off. They walked around for 40 years. Now, where had you at? Uh, yeah. Now, watch this. Because he said in multiple places, you good. I'm going to close it up. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, and verse 21. Now, earlier, we was, you was trying to allude to the Gentiles. And he read it for you, but it went right over your head. It went right over your head. Because y'all say, y'all say, this means a Jew nor a Gentile. But that covenant is going to be made with the house of Judah and the house of Israel. That's right. They call Gentiles in the New Testament. Read. And say to them, thus to the Lord God, uh -huh. behold, I will take the children of Israel. Hold on, hold on. Go to verse 11 first. So this talk about the valley of dry bones, where we are today. Read that. So Read now, that. book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 and verse 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, uh -huh. these dry bones are the whole house of Israel. Everything is for Israel. This whole Bible is about God and his chosen people. So the, the dry bones represent the whole house of Israel, both kingdoms. Go ahead. Now drop down to 21. Verse 21. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel uh -huh. from among the heathen. From among the heathen. Among all these people we've been scattered to. Go ahead. Will they not be gone? Uh -huh. And will gather them on every side uh -huh. and bring them into their own land. Bring us into our own. He going to do it, bro. That's right. He going to bring us. We got to wait on him. Go ahead. And I will make them one nation. He going to make us one nation. We're divided. We have to be reconciled to him. No more one, no more two nations. Go ahead. I know it, sounds, it sounds strange, 
but sure ain't never paid attention to this before. You said well, that's okay. why I said that's why I says Judah and Israel. That's who the covenant is with. Both houses. Bring it out. Why he said in John 11, I have sheep of another fold, but they still the sheep of Israel. That's Come right. And what? In the land upon the mountains of Israel. Uh huh. And one king shall be king to them all. That's Christ. Read. And they shall be no more two nations. See? No more two nations. No longer we're going to be split. We're going to be reconciled. Like it said in Ephesians, he bring he's going to break down that partition and make us one man. Read. Neither shall they be divided into two kings anymore at all. What verse is that? Read verse 23. Verse 23. Neither shall they defile themselves mm -hmm. anymore with their idols. Right, no more idolatry, no none of that. We're going to repent and return back to our God. Why? Because we need to be saved from our enemies. The same people we were sold to. Not just here in America. There have been several um, slave traders. The Arab man got our people too. The Chinese man got our people too. The Indian people got us. The East Indians. We scattered everywhere. And during the Renaissance period, they rounded our people up and sent us into captivity. Go ahead. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their dustable things, mm -hmm. nor with any of their transgressions. No more sin. That's right. But I will save them out of the land of all their dwelling places. See, he, he going to save us. He going to cleanse us. Only Israel is going to be cleansed. He gave his life for Israel. Finish it up. We're in. They have sin and all and will cleanse me. Right, see? He gonna cleanse us. You can't find no scripture in the Bible where he cleansed any other people. None whatsoever. Matter of fact, give me Isaiah. Go to Isaiah 53, the last two verses. Yeah, yeah, finish. So shall they be my people. Uh huh. And I will be their God. Same promise given to Abraham. And he gonna give us the land forever. That's it. Okay, Isaiah 53, the last two verses. Give me um, Hebrews 9 and uh, 15. We'll show you something real quick. Because Christ only gave his life for the children of Israel. Even he himself, oh no, even he said himself, watch this. You, ain't, you can't break no prophecy. Isaiah 53, go ahead and read that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 53 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. He shall see of the travail mm -hmm. of his soul. It shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servants justify me. Uh, come on. For he shall bear their iniquities. He gonna bear our iniquities. Go ahead. Verse 20. Therefore will I divide him a portion with great. And he shall divide the spoil and with the strong. Mm -hmm. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death. Uh -huh. And he was numbered with the transgressors. Go ahead. And he bare the sins of many. He bare the sins of many. The sins of who though? Who sinned? Who was giving God's commandment? God. Israel. Go ahead. And made intercession, made intercession for their transgressions. For their transgressions. What has that got to do with the other nations? They won't never give the commandments and the ultimatum that you was going to have curses if you didn't keep them. That's why the curses fell upon us. Now let's go to Brother Paul, because he's going to break the same thing up. Uh, Hebrews 9 and 15. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. So, because he gave his life, he is the mediator of the New Testament. We read earlier, that covenant is only with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Go ahead. Death by means of death. By means of his death. Him giving his life and cleansing the entire nation of Israel. Come on. For the redemption of the transgressions. For the redemption to redeem those. Go ahead. Of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Who was under the first testament? So that's who the second testament is for. That's right Read it again. Okay. Verse 15. And for this cause is he the mediator of the new testament. Mm -hmm. That by the means of death. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Right. They which are called might receive 
the promise of eternal inheritance. So, the he gave his life for the Israelites so that those that are called might receive the eternal promise. Eternal life in that land of Canaan for Israel. Now, uh, John chapter 10 and verse 11. We're in hell right now. And heaven is being in our rulership in our kingdom. That's what heaven is. When we die, somebody who doesn't put them back. Revelation 20 and verse 12. The same commandments that everybody tells us not to keep, we're supposed to keep them. This why. All right, Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. Uh -huh. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Right. This. Go ahead. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. So you can be judged what's written in, what's written in here. God's commandments. Including the feast days, all that. We can show you in the kingdom you're going to be keeping feast days. Those right there. This. Just for us. Just for the Israelites. The descendants of the slaves. So anybody else. They're not. Why do you say like They're not going to heaven or hell. Again, heaven, heaven is us being in rulership. Hell is us being. Listen, 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 listen. Us being in captivity is hell. It's a state. Now it also represents you being in the grave. Okay, but all of this is about rulership on this planet. Everything has to be done in righteousness. God chose our nation of people to rule with Him. That's right. That's what it's all about. Once we die, where did we go? We go to where our spirits are kept. The Most High has a place where our spirits are kept. Okay. Okay. Like the scriptures say, this is just what You gather. You're gathered to your people. Whatever tribe you come from, you gather to them. So it's just what it is. It's just rulership is just for the Israelites. Okay. The other hold on, bro. The other nations were created for a purpose. They're gonna be servants. It's, Christianity has done a number on us. The earth's still gonna be here. The only thing gonna change is gonna be a heavenly rulership that starts with the most high. His laws. We gonna enforce his laws. Give me Revelation 19. Jump to 19 and 11. They don't have to follow. They will in the kingdom. Right now, no, they're not held responsible. They are, they're gonna be punished. They're gonna be punished for what they've done to us. Yeah, they're gonna be punished for whatever what they've done to us. They've all had us in captivity and done all kinds of atrocities to us. Now watch this. Read Revelation 19 and 11. 19 and 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he, and, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. That's talking about Christ, right? And in righteousness, he do judge and make war. See, in righteousness, according to the commandments, he's going to judge and make war. But nations don't want this to us, they got to get punished. Go ahead. His eyes were as a flame of fire, uh -huh. and on his head were many crowns. That's why. Go ahead. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He's don't about to know Christ's real name. That's just the name he had when he was on the earth. Right now, if they're not following up, they're going to be punished. No, not now. In the kingdom. Watch, watch, watch. Because remember, he's going to come back. And then he's establishing it. And he was called with a vesture dipped in blood. Right. And his name is called the Word of God. The reason his vesture dipped in blood is like he showed you he's going to kill millions of people. And he, he, he was going, remember Isaiah 63, he said he's going to trade the wine press on Edom, right? He's going. And the armies which were in heaven followed him mm -hmm. upon white horses, uh -huh. clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Which represents righteousness. Us repenting. Go ahead. And out of his mouth go a sharp sword. This, this word. That with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, See? and he tread them. The he gonna he gonna rule them with a rod of iron. They are gonna be forced to keep the commandments. Nobody has to, nobody desires to keep God's commandments right now. Not even our people. It's just those that's repenting that want to do it. Go ahead. All right. 
He treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Just like in Isaiah 63, he's going to trade the winepress with him. That's why his garment was, he, he asked the question, why your garment red is dipped in blood? Go ahead. And he have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So let's talk about Christ. We're going to rule with him. Give me Romans 8, uh, Romans 8 and 16. They're going to be forced to follow these. But see, they make their right own now, laws. Right now, yeah, right now they got their own kingdoms and all that, and they rule ruling each other. They're going to be punished for the things they've done to us. All of them, all of them have had us. Jeremiah 30 and 16. There's some people who so, but he not, it's, it's no, it's not like that. It's, he dealing with a whole nation. So the majority of our people were in sin. And if you had righteous brothers, they still went into captivity like Daniel. Daniel was in two captivities. We always had ju judges that was righteous. He said, all of them, he said, yeah. Um, if they treat us unfairly now, they will be punished for what they did to us. But if they're treating us right, what they have done to us all through history, too, they're going to have to take it. But they are treating us right now. So not all of them are treating us wrong. Some of them are just as kind as anybody else. Are you going to punish them, too? Yeah, but what he just said, he just said that we have righteous people that got put in captivity. They, didn't, they weren't breaking the laws and commandments. But they still got put in captivity. Right. Yeah. That's what he just was saying. So just as those people that treat you nice, that just those ones that treat you nice, they're still going to be punished for their what nation did. for yeah. what their nation did. Just like we were punished for well the, the righteous our brothers. Our yeah, what our uh, Romans chapter eight That's verse sixteen. That's how the Lord deal. He deal with entire nations. Romans. Entire nations, bro. That's why you supposed to see I'm just one where I got you at? Yeah. Well, I get punished or do everybody get punished. I'll show you, I'll show you. Hold on. Yeah, go ahead and read this. Alright. Romans 8 16. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Uh -huh. And if children then heirs, and heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. See? The children of Israel are joint heirs of Christ. Yes. It's our job to be ruled, the rulers on this planet. Now, give me um, Daniel uh, 7 and 26. If I don't, what going to happen? When the Most High come back and give judgment, your, your spirit will be destroyed. Your spirit will be destroyed. But, yeah, go ahead and read this. This is why the other nations. This is why they're getting punished. 30 and start at 15. Start with us, because... It starts with us because of our wickedness. Uh, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30 and verse 15. Why Christ thou for thine affliction? So and he's saying, why are we crying for our affliction? Why are we crying out because we've been afflicted? We brought it on our own selves by committing sin. Come on. Thy sorrow is incurable. It's incurable. You know why? Because he's the one causing it. He's the one that brought the other nations against us because we don't want to follow him. So we gotta be punished. Go ahead. For the multitude of thy iniquities. Thy iniquities, thy sins. Come on. Because thy sins were increased, mm -hmm. I have done these things unto thee. He has done this stuff to us. So we got to make, that's why we were saying, Christ came to be that mediator to make peace between us and the Most High. That's right. Christ is what give extending to him the other branch. Go ahead. Verse 16. Therefore, all they that devoured thee shall all, be devoured. All they that devoured us shall be devoured. We were supposed to serve them, but they went way overboard. Like I said, they gonna be punished because of us. Their forefathers died all the way back then. Even to this day. Let me let me tell you something. I, hold on, hold on. Hold on, bro. I got a, I got I got a little small business. One of my customers, almost all my customers, eat them. But one of my customers, man, treats me real good. But he's still going to, and he in his 80s, he going to die, but he going to have to come back, and he going to have to serve. That's what the Lord said. We got to follow the Lord. That's all he said. 
Go ahead, watch this. And all thy adversaries. All our adversaries. All the people that came up against us. All the people that treat you nice. Are they your adversaries? You can't Their nations. All the nations have treated us bad. Go ahead. Every one of them shall go into captivity. Every one of them. So as a nation, they gotta go. Didn't um didn't Ezra go into uh, captivity? Ezra, the prophet Ezra, the prophet Jeremiah, the scribe Baruch, all of them, they went into captivity. They were righteous men. The Lord was dealing with them. But they st our nation went into captivity. So like, so like right now, we trying to get our people to repent, so that when Christ come back, it can be saved. Those that don't repent, not gonna be saved, because the scriptures tell us only one third of our people don't repent. Sixty, you know, one out of two out of every three people not gonna repent, and they gonna destroy. Right, it's, it's, it's giving you admonition. 
I know exactly what you're talking about. Acts 18, man. Yeah. 18. Come on, man. Acts Yo, that's the Christianity <laughs> doctor, bro. Who taught Timothy? Acts 18. Yeah. Who taught Timothy? I mean, I know that I know that woman teaches. Who taught Timothy? No, not in here. Who taught Timothy? Ain't no woman. Ain't, you can't find a woman here that who taught Timothy. Hold on. His grandma and his mother. And that's it. Tell me that's not in here. Well, you know, you can go to Titus. The women's supposed yeah. to teach the children. Okay. But she ain't supposed she to be taught. teaching she men. Taught. She ain't supposed to be teaching men. A woman ain't supposed to be leading. In the congregation. Right. She can teach the kids the same. Children. Right. <laughs> That's what she, 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 she has to teach the children. She got to do that. That's why you need to supposed to find a virtuous wife. You wouldn't find a woman out here teaching these men out here. Right. No. That's how the whole I knew. Right, right. Yeah, that's See, we believe in every word of the time. Do you? Priscilla, well, it don't say that she taught the man. It's Priscilla and Aquila. Aquila is the husband. Right, what? Read verse 1. Read verse 1. Read verse 1. Verse one. Acts chapter 18, verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. See? Aquila was the husband, Priscilla was the wife. Right. You're not going to see where she taught some man. They expounded to him Christ. Because this dude, whoever he was, he was mighty in his heart. Apollos. Because he was mighty. He was a mighty dude. My Bible all marked because it was straight plain. Um. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfect. Right, so they expounded to him Christ. That's all that was going on. Because all of these are Jews and Israelites they're going to, and they're telling them about Christ. Because in Deuteronomy 18, you had the prophecy that one of your brethren was going to be raised up, and you had to listen to his words, or it was going to be required. That's why if you didn't believe on Christ, you could have Because he's going to show you how to keep the commandments in order to get the kingdom of heaven. That's what that's all about. Go ahead. And when he was disposed to pass... Oh, you good, you good. Okay. Okay. We're done, we're done. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's the day. That's all we have to do. Right, we, we do this on the Lord's day. So, like, you know, ain't supposed to be no buying and stuff. Ain't supposed to be no cooking. Ain't supposed to do that type of stuff. So, that, you know, you hear about everybody. What laws do you know? Are we going to keep all the laws that don't what was done away, let me show you. Give me, uh, yeah, I know, I know. what? About animal sacrifice. So we don't. So give me first Peter 2 and 5. Huh? All right, so everything that dealt, dealt with sacrifice was involved in the temple too. Now we are the temple. 
So we got to keep commandments. We can't have any unclean thing in us. And that's in your mind. Because that's where sin begins. So we keep all the commandments without animal sacrifice. Animal sacrifice is just a way of atoning for you breaking the commandments. How about the way, the way, the way they dress in the Old Testament? You are supposed to follow their dressing as a priest. You know, they wear certain clothes. So we do that. We do that on feast day. We're supposed to be a whole nation of priests right now. Now, are you with the first people? I'm at, I'm at first. Yeah, read verse 5. Verse, verse 5. Verse 2 and 5. Okay, verse 5. He also, as lively stone. Uh huh. Those are, 12 tribes. There's a stone for each tribe. That's what I'm talking about. Go ahead. Are built up a spiritual house. Uh -huh. And holy priesthood. Uh huh. A holy priesthood. Go ahead. To offer up spiritual sacrifice. Spiritual 